Welcome to ASGCC Sermons, where faith comes alive and the Word of God transforms lives. We're thrilled to have you join us for another inspiring journey into the heart of Scripture. Whether you're tuning in from your living room or on the go, we believe that God has a powerful message tailored just for you. At ASGCC, we're more than a community. We're a family of believers seeking to grow in our relationship with God and one another. Each sermon is a unique opportunity to explore the timeless truths of the Bible, discovering practical insights that will empower you in your daily walk. So grab your Bible, open your hearts, and let's get ready to embark on a transformative experience. It's not just another sermon, it's a divine encounter. Thank you for joining us on this journey of faith. Let's dive into the word together and allow God's love and wisdom to guide us in every step of life. Welcome to ASGCC Sermons. But the title of our message this morning is I am the resurrection and the life. And we know those words was the words of Jesus Christ himself. He said, I am, I am. And there were several I am's in that, uh, in that chapter. And this was one where he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He's letting you know, Jesus is letting you know who I am. He was talking to Mary and Martha and he was saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Mostly Martha. Amen. Amen. So my brothers and sisters in Christ on this morning, our hearts are happy and our hearts are heavy as they should be. As we remember the pain, we have to remember the pain. We have to remember the suffering. We have to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on that cross. So that gives us a heart of heaviness and a heart of happiness. We can feel the joy of the Lord, but we must also feel his pain and his suffering and what he went through on that cross because he did it for us. Amen. He didn't do it for himself. He did it for us. So even in the shadow of, of Good Friday and, and in the shadow of Holy Saturday, a light still shines this morning. Amen. And we, we're here and we're thankful. And we know that on today, people are in service on today that may not have been in service all year long. And we are thankful for them because that shows us that they believe. They believe and they know ah, that if Jesus Christ had not been crucified on that cross, had not resurrected, then they would still be in their sins. Mm -hmm. Come on now. And so we give thanks for each and every person that is in church somewhere, Preach. whether it's in their homes, Preach. whether it's in the church sanctuary, whether they went to sunrise service, whatever the case may be, we are thankful for those who recognize that today of all days, I got to be in church. Come on, somebody. Because Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. So if you return to John chapter 11, verse 25 with me, you will, you will certainly have an opportunity to see exactly what he said. John chapter 11, let's start at verse 25. Amen. And so I'm going to read this from the amplified version that says, Jesus says to her, talking to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives in, adheres to, trusts in, relies on me as Savior, will live even if he dies. And everyone, somebody say everyone. And everyone who lives and believes in me as Savior will never die. And then he asks a very important question of her. And he's asking that same question of us today. Do you believe this? <laughs> Jesus said, do you believe this? Do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? Because if you believe in me as your savior, you will live even if you die. And if you 
live and believe in me, you will never die. Yeah. Come on, somebody. So these words spoken by Jesus Christ himself hold a power that transcends death. They are not mere words of comfort, but a statement of absolute truth, Deacon Damon, absolute truth. Jesus, the son of God, is not just proclaiming his divinity. No, no, no. He's offering us humanity. He's, uh, he's offering us more immortality. We will never die. We will go beyond the grave. We will live beyond the grave. But you got to believe this. So do you believe? That he is the resurrection and the life. He wasn't just resurrected. No, he is the resurrection. There is a difference. Come on, somebody. Think about it. Death has been a constant companion since the dawn of time. Death has been there since Adam and Eve. Let me say it like that. Come on, somebody. It has loomed over us. It's a source of fear and uncertainty. But Jesus, through his death and resurrection, shatters the chains of that fear. And we should no longer fear death. The chains have been broken over us mm -hmm. because we are going to live. Those of us who believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Has di was ha had died and is resurrected and is living. The chains have been broken. Mm -hmm. We no longer have to fear death. He doesn't deny death existence, but he conquers it. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. Now, some may ask, what does this mean for us? It means that for those who believe in Jesus Christ, death is not the end. Mm. It is not the end. It is a transformation. It is a passage from this life to the next. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Come on now. Yes, our physical bodies may return to the dust, but our souls with the grace of God, will live on eternally with him. That's why it's so important to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you haven't done that, don't wait. Today is the day. This hour is the hour. This minute is the minute. This second is the second because you don't know. Come on, somebody, if you're going to live through your next breath. So Jesus says, don't wait until tomorrow. Do it today. If you have family members, if you are saved and you have family members that you know aren't, offer them the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You do not want to die in your sin. You do not want your family members to die in their sin because that means they're going to live eternally, but not with Jesus. Come on, somebody. Heaven and hell is for real. Come on, come on now. So when we, lo when we lose loved ones, we can understand that this promise doesn't ease the pain of, of relief. We're still going to feel that pain. We're still going to feel that void. We're still going to know that that person is gone forever and we won't see them again until we get on the other side. But it does ease the burden. Knowing that we will get there. We will see them again someday. Amen. We will be reunited with Christ in the new and, e and eternal existence. And what I'm about to say, I'm not saying this to discourage you from doing it. But one thing I don't do is I don't go and visit people in their graves. My father has been gone for as long as I can remember, since I was seven years old, I've never had the desire or the want of my close friends 
of my aunts and anybody to go sit by their grave. I'm not trying to discourage you from doing that. I'm just saying for me, I just don't do it because I know they're not there. Come on, somebody. And we're going to talk about that because Jesus, they did that. There were some women that went to Jesus' uh, grave. And they were sad and their heads was dropped down lowly and the angel had to speak to them and say, wait a minute, what are you, what are you doing here at the grave? Come on now. So Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. But there's more. There's more to it. He says, whoever yep. believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live now that that's a promise right there so the next time you go to a, a, a funeral service of one of your loved ones you can look in there and you can say though he died yet shall he live come on somebody because that is the truth the absolute truth and knowing that you can truly celebrate their death because you know that it took that to get them to the other side, to be with Jesus. And I've always said, if they could come back, they wouldn't. Not after tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. After being in his presence, tell me who would want to come back to this. Death for us is what Jesus is trying to say is a gift. From God. Come on, somebody. Belief is not passive. It's a conscious choice, a commitment to follow Christ's teachings. He's so he he's asking you the question this morning. Do you believe this? Do you believe living the Christian life? It isn't always easy, y'all. <laughs> it's not always easy. There will be challenges. There will be doubts and moments of despair and even disbelief. You may even lose your faith momentarily. Life is hard. Things happen. But in those times, remember this promise. The promise of resurrection. The promise of life everlasting. Let it be your anchor. Your source of strength. Your source of hope. Your ability to keep on keeping on, knowing that this too shall pass, knowing that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. So let us go forth from this place with renewed faith. When we woke up this morning, we should have wakened with a renewed faith, knowing that he has risen. He's not dead. Let us carry the message of Christ with us everywhere we go. And this is a message of hope, of love, of eternal life into this dying dark world. They need to hear this message. They need to know that, yes, I believe. I believe that this Jesus of Nazareth, I believe. Hallelujah, that he was born, that he died, and he's resurrected. I believe this. May we live each day with the knowledge that death is not the final chapter. And I've been talking about this all month, but it's a stepping stone into a glorious new beginning. Come on now, we have to look at this as believers, like we know that we know that we know what Jesus Christ did on that cross. I mean, this is the most important message of them all. Thank you that he was born. Thank you that he came into the world. Thank you that the word became flesh. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you dwelt among us. Thank you that the temptations we bear you bore. But, oh, God, thank you thank that you died. Oh, God, thank you 
Hallelujah, that you resurrected. And thank you that you are living again. And because you live, we live. Because you live, we can face tomorrow. And everything that tomorrow holds. Come on now. Because no matter what, we know that you are with us. No matter what, we know that you are for us. And if you be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. Not even the devil in hell. Come on, somebody. All right, now. I'm about to preach myself happy way too soon. Come on, somebody. So Matthew chapter 28, verse 5. Let's turn there. Amen. Amen. Let's turn there. Matthew 28, verse 5. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's just so good. Hallelujah. I just filled his presence on this morning. His anointing is in this place. Come on, somebody. I hope you feel the presence of the Lord where you are. Still yourself and allow yourself to feel the presence of the Lord. He will fill up your home. He will fill you up wherever you are. His weightiness will fall on you and you won't even be able to move or sit there with tears in your eyes. We serve an almighty God. We serve a good God. And it's time for us to understand that, to know that, to believe that, and to walk in that. Amen. Come on, somebody. God is good. All the time, husband, and all the time, God is good. Amen. So Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 says, And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. So at this moment, I have asked Sister Kim to read Matthew chapter 28 for us. And so I want everyone to turn here because this is a very important scripture. And sometimes we have to see scripture for ourselves. Amen. So turn there and read with me. This is your opportunity to read the Bible for yourself and see what it says for yourself. Make sure I'm not making any mistakes. Okay. Matthew chapter 28. Sister Kim, if you're ready, we're ready to hear what the Lord is saying to us on this morning. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and began as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know what ye seek, Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall he, there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Disciples, behold, Jesus met, met them saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and this, this is, is the story of the resurrection. resurrection. This, this is, is it out of the, the Bible. Bible. That, that was, was Matthew's, Matthew's account. account. And then, then we, we have Luke's, Luke's account, account over in Luke chapter 24. And, and I, I won't, won't read it all, but I will read verse 5 and 7. Thank, thank you, Sister Kim. Kim. It, it says, says, the woman, the women, I'm sorry, were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. ground. They'd gone, gone to the tomb, tomb and they looked in. in. They, 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 were, they, were, they were just still there, all, kneeling down, just still crying over what had happened to Jesus. 
And the man asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? So that's what I'm saying. Understand this. If you're going to go to the grave to visit your loved ones, understand that, that you're looking among the dead for someone who is alive. Come on now. Uh, they went on to say he isn't there. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee? That the son of man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and that he would rise again on the third day. There it is right there. Jesus, the angels was reminding them that they knew this already. It really happened. He was, he was gone. gone. He, he wasn't, wasn't there. there. And, and then, then you saw, saw Jesus speaking to the folks after he had resurrected. He, he appeared to them and he talked to them and he tell and, and they, they actually fell down onto at his feet and worshiped him. And of course, he allowed them to do so. He didn't tell them, oh, no, get up. Don't worship me. They were doing exactly what we're to do. Worship Jesus Christ for what he has done for us. Hallelujah. Fall on your face. Worship God. There is no shame in it and there is no harm in it. It's all good. Amen. You have to do that sometimes. Amen, somebody. So in this moment, Jesus speaking to Martha regarding the death of her brother, with you in the first verse that we read over in John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, Jesus declares and said to her, I am myself the resurrection and the life. Amen. Whoever believes in me, although he may die, yet he shall live. And whosoever continues to live and believe in has faith in, cleaves to, and relies on. You got to have faith in this. The Amplified Version blows it up and say, you got to have faith in this. You, the, that word believes mean has faith in, cleaves to, and relies on. Me shall never actually die at all. And do you believe this? So Jesus don't see us as dead. He sees us as asleep. We're resting. And after all this, we go through down here. We deserve that rest. Peace. Joy. We're sleeping. We're resting. Come on, somebody. So what Jesus Christ was declaring to Martha was that he was indeed the resurrection in the flesh. In this moment, Jesus was telling Martha that death could not override his authority. Remember, he laid down his life. And he said, I laid it down and I can pick it up again. And he did. Amen. Come on. Jesus was declaring that he was more powerful than the power and the stench and the sting and the decay of death. It is in this moment where the resurrection in the flesh conquered death. Doubt. And the grave. The moment he said, not actually at when it happened, but when he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life at that moment, that was it. It was over. That was resurrection in the flesh. That was him declaring to her and to us that I am the resurrection. In the flesh, you're looking at the resurrection. And so he was able to do what? Go and resurrect her brother. Because he's a resurrected. Death has no say so when Jesus steps on the scene. Death has to obey him. Death doesn't have authority over Christ. That's good news. Come on, somebody. So Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. So once I resurrect, you live. 
I mean, I need you to think about that for a moment. I am the resurrection, but I'm not just the resurrection. I am the life. I am. There's no resurrection outside of me, and there's no life outside of me. I am it. Anyone who believes in me, Jesus says, will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Do you believe this, Verlia? Do you believe this, Natalie? Do you believe this? Anyone who is on this call listening, do you believe this? You must. Jesus Christ declared again, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in Christ, though he were dead, yet shall he live. If your loved ones died in Christ, they're living. They're not dead. Come on, somebody. They're no longer here. You can no longer see them or hear them or feel them or touch them, but they are alive. They're more alive than you are. Come on, somebody. Jesus Christ was the walking, breathing, and living resurrection in the flesh. Death could not overthrow his authority. I got to bring this point home this morning. Nothing could overrule his power. Nothing could ever overrule his power. He is almighty. The power and decay of death were no stronger than, than the authority, might, and power of Jesus. He was and is the resurrection, and he will always be. Amen. Come on, somebody. So when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 says, Now I will remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. So what is he saying here? Verse three, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I was received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then the twelve. Then he appeared to more than the 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James. Then to the apostles, last of all, as to one uh, untimely born, he appeared also to me. Paul is talking about himself. So after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to all these people to prove that he truly did resurrect. He was no longer in that grave and there was no doubt about it. Paul says, then he appeared to me. Come on now, over in the book of Acts, that did happen. Last of all, he says, as one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Verse nine, for I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by grace, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Rather than it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Hallelujah. So I understand that there it is, Paul talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So there is a lot of confusion sometimes uh, regarding Easter Sunday. A Resurrection Sunday. There's a lot of confusion. I posted every day this week on our website and on our Instagram account about Holy Monday, Palm Sunday, Holy Monday, Holy Tuesday, Holy Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, or Holy Thursday and Holy Saturday. And then here we are Easter Sunday. And, we, and I got questions about this and people are concerned and they want to know, should Christians really celebrate Easter? Isn't that a pagan holiday? A lot of this is beginning to come up 
surrounding our holidays, whether it be Christmas or Easter, two of the biggest Christian holidays of all. People are starting to doubt whether or not they should be celebrating these days. These are glorious days for us. Now, Easter Sunday, it, you know, if you're thinking that it's about the Easter bunny, a color decorated eggs or egg hunts, then no. You, 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 you got it wrong. You, you're a bit confused here. And I, and I understand it because that's how you grew up, right? Yeah. But most people understand that Easter Sunday has something to do with the resurrection of Jesus, which is why I say today, more than any other day, the churches are full. Mm. Thank God. That tells me that it's more than about the Easter bunny or Easter eggs mm. or hunting them, or coloring them. Easter Sunday has something to do with the resurrection of Jesus, but some folks are confused as to how the resurrection is related to Easter eggs and Easter bunny. There is no relationship there. Mm. And I'm not going to try to find one for you. I'm not going to try to say, well, the eggs represent birth and this was that and the bunny is there. No. Mm. There is no connection. Even people who don't consider themselves particularly religious will often attend church services again like I said on Christmas and Easter especially Easter and as a result just about everyone knows at least two stories about Jesus they know about his birth and they know about his death and resurrection we know about those things so biblically speaking there is absolutely no connection between the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the common modern related traditions of Easter Sunday. I just wanted to say that. So essentially what occurred is that in order to make Christianity more attractive to non-Christians, what the Roman Catholic Church did was they mixed the celebration of Jesus's resurrection, uh, which involves spring fertility rituals with the resurrection of Christ. And that's where we get in trouble as a church. We're always trying to make things more interesting and puff things up for the outside world. That's not our job. As Christians, as teachers and preachers and followers and believers of Jesus Christ, we're not here to make Christ seem more appealing to people by bringing in worldly things into the church. Truck. Jesus Christ, trust me, he doesn't need our help. He is who he is. He can do what he said he can do. And he's got this. He doesn't need us to build him up. All he needs us to do is live the life. You're preaching when you live the life. You're teaching when you live the life. If you do that, you're doing what you're supposed to do. When you obey God, you're doing what you, that's the biggest message of all. You can't preach a more important message than living the life that Jesus Christ has, has called you to live. When you walk in that thing out, people will see it for themselves. They don't need you to bring in worldly things to show them Christ. Let your life show them Christ. Let your life reveal Christ to them. Amen. Somebody Amen. come on now. So the Bible makes it clear that Jesus was resurrected on the first day of the week. We call it Sunday. We call it the Sabbath. There are some churches that call it Saturday. I don't care. I know that he rose on the first day of the week. And Matthew 28 verse 1 actually tells us that. It says, now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And Sister Kim just read for you that he was not there. In Mark chapter 16, verse 2, and early and very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. Amen. I, I don't know what the first day of the week is. I don't. 
And I, I honestly don't care because I'm going to praise him every single day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He has risen for me every day. He died for me every day. I'm going to praise and worship him every day. If you do that, you can't get it wrong. Come on, somebody. So while it is appropriate for Jesus' resurrection to be celebrated on a Sunday or a Saturday, whichever your day is, I'm not trying to step on your toes. All I care about is you celebrating Jesus Christ. You serving and worshiping him. That's all that matters to me. Anything else, you have to get your resolve from him. Amen. So as a result, many Christians feel strongly that the day on which we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, they don't want it to be called Easter Sunday anymore. So you will now hear people saying Resurrection Sunday. That's following. I love it. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. So because of the commercialization and possible pagan origins of Easter, many churches are preferring to get away from Easter, get away from the eggs, get away from the bunny, and actually focus on the resurrection of Christ, which is what we should be doing. Paul says that without the resurrection of Christ, our faith is futile. Mm -hmm. So we have to preach and teach the resurrection. He says, as if Christ was not being raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. And we don't want to be in our sins. So we have to acknowledge the resurrection. If nobody is physically resurrected from the dead, Paul has written that that would mean Christ himself was not raised from the dead. And we know he was. So we have to teach that and preach that. And if the only time you, you want to do it is on Easter, on Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, that's fine. But I believe Christ is calling us to preach that message each and every day to talk about the resurrected Christ because he's no longer dead. Amen. So what more wonderful reason could we have to celebrate? Because he lives, we live. Come on now. So if you look at Romans chapter six, verse 24, it says we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the father, we, too, might walk in the newness of life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's important to know that Jesus Christ is risen. And that he is the resurrection and the life. So should we celebrate Easter or allow our children to go on Easter egg, Easter egg hunts? I know you guys want to know this question, but I, an answer to it. But the question is, the answer is left up to the parents. It's not left up to the church leaders. But, I, you know, but the, but the, I think the parents should be. Looking to the church leaders, but not all the church leaders are walking the walk. Mm -hmm. So you go to the word of God. You go to the word of God in Romans chapter 14, verse uh, five says one person esteems one day is better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. So what does Paul say here? Paul dealt with a lot of this in the church with issues and disputable matters between Christians. There, there are issues where the Bible does not give distinct, obvious guidance. And this is one of them. Now, sexual immorality and idolatry, for instance, are clearly, clearly condemned. We, we get the message on that. But in contrast, however, are issues such as the examples that Paul was given here in Romans chapter 14, the freedom to eat meat, versus abstaining from it or for religious reasons or the freedom to celebrate certain holidays. He covers all of this in the word. So you don't need to come to me. You don't need to go to um, your pastors or somebody else to find out what God wants you to do here. 
He wants you to celebrate him. He wants you to worship him. He wants you to praise him. He wants you to lift him up. He wants you to believe that I am the resurrection and the life. Okay. So, but he also says here that, listen, we're not going to condemn you if that's what you want to do. That's a disputable matter between Christians, not a disputable matter between you and God. There are issues where the Bible just are not going to tell you everything. So he says, now he applies the same teaching to the observance of religious holidays. Paul tells Roman Christians to be fully convinced in their own minds about whether to observe special days or not. Christians with opposing views on matters of freedom from sin. Hey, you do whatever it is you want to do, the Bible says. He says each should act on their own convictions and honor the Lord in doing so. So we're not supposed to judge them if they do or if they don't. But I, so only thing I say is if that's what you want to do, fine. But let the kids know it's just you're just having fun. This is not the reason for Resurrection Sunday. We're just going to have some fun. We're gonna, this is how we're going to help. We're going to celebrate and, 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 and bring you in so that you can have some fun too. We're going to paint some eggs and we're going to hunt some eggs and we're going to do this. But this is fun. It has nothing to do with Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We're just going to do it and just enjoy uh, family time. Uh, there's nothing essentially evil about painting and hiding eggs. I'm not saying that. And having children search for them, if that's what they want to do. What is important is our focus. If our focus is on Christ, our children can be taught to understand that eggs are just a fun game like anything else. Amen. Amen. So Christians should know the true meaning of the day and parents should uh, teach their children the true meaning of the day. In the end, participation in egg hunts uh, are, uh, uh, and other secular traditions, even like things we do at, uh, for Christmas, must be left up to the discretion of parents who are following the word of the Lord. Amen. So truthfully, Christ's resurrection is something that should be celebrated every day, really. Not just once a year. At the same time, if we choose to celebrate Easter Sunday, we should know uh, and not allow the games and the fun to be our only reason for doing it. It is about family. It, it is about the resurrection. It is about understanding what Jesus Christ did for us and praising him and worshiping him and thanking him. It's a day that has been set aside just for that. Let's, let's use it for that. Amen. So the fact that Jesus was resurrected from the dead and that his resurrection demonstrates that we can indeed be promised an eternal home in heaven by receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's reason enough to celebrate mm -hmm. any day. Amen. Amen, somebody. So never entertain the thought that Jesus was not raised from the dead mm -hmm. and there is no life after death. There is life after death. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead. This place is not hell. This earth is not heaven and this earth is not hell. It's just what it is. It's earth. The essence of Christianity is rooted in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's rooted in that, which opens the door for us as believers to share the same experience. He opened the door for us, death to flesh and resurrection into a new eternal life when he decides to resurrect us. Amen. Come on, somebody. So your life will never remain the same when you live conscious of this truth. Every day, remember what Jesus Christ did on that cross and what he did by getting up out of that grave. Jesus re was resurrected from the dead and there will be a resurrection day for all of us. Yeah. Amen. So I'm so thankful that I had an opportunity to come before you this morning. I told you that I want, didn't want to stay long. 
I just wanted to make sure that we understand what we're doing when you leave this church service today and you go about your day, whether it be helping your children find eggs, color eggs, make a special dinner for your family. Just understand what this day truly means. Amen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. And if you go our founding scripture, we didn't read it this morning uh, purposely. Oh, well, well, Natalie did read it, but I didn't expound on it purposely at that time. But I want to now. So if you would turn, this is our last scripture and I'm closing. And that's Colossians chapter one. And this is our founding scripture, but I'm only going to read two verses, verses 16 and 17 from the New King James Version. It says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. All things, all thrones, all authority, all dominion, might and power were created by him and for him. All things in heaven and in earth bows to him. All things submit to him. All things are subject to him. At the name of Jesus, all authority bows. Amen. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made, is what James says. And in him was life and life was the light of men. He is life. He is light. He is and he stands alone. There is no one that can stand in his place. He crushes idols. He crushes death. He is a resurrection and a life. No one can take his place. No one can dethrone him. No one can take his honor for he is full of glory and splendor. He is the all in all, the all in all, the all and all. He stands from age to age. He alone has all dominion and power. He alone is worthy. He alone is honored. He alone is exalted. He alone is mighty. He alone is adored. All authority and honor belong to him. He is life. He is truth. He, he reigns forever and ever and ever. He is the resurrection. He is the life. He is the way. Without him, there is no way. Without him, there is no life. And without him, there is no resurrection. The end. Mm. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us today on ASGCC Sermons. We hope this time of worship, reflection, and teaching has been a source of inspiration and encouragement to you. As we come to an end of our time together, we want to extend a heartfelt invitation to those who may be listening or watching. If you've been touched by today's message and feel the stirring in your heart, we want you to know that God loves you unconditionally. The journey of faith is a personal one, and we believe that God is reaching out to you right now where you are. If you haven't experienced the life-changing love of Jesus Christ, we want to give you an opportunity to invite him in your life. If you desire to know God personally, to experience his forgiveness, and receive the gift of eternal life, we invite you to pray with us right now. You can simply repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you just as I am. I recognize that I am in need of your love and forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and make me a new creation. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. I surrender my life to you, and I choose to follow you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to congratulate you on the most important decision of your life. We encourage you to connect with a local church, read the Bible, and spend time in prayer to nurture your newfound relationship with God. Thank you for being a part of the ASGCC family today. We look forward to the amazing journey ahead with you. Remember, God loves you and we do too. May his grace and his peace be with you always.